<clears throat> okay, so welcome to the first digital tools for the classroom and how to um, bring your content to the homes of all your students so that they can continue to uh, meaningful engage and meaningfully engage with the curriculum as well as your content. Now, many of you are already familiar with either One Notebook, uh, One Note, or Google Classroom. Um, Hopefully this video will be help, uh, helpful for you. If not, uh, please forward it to somebody who doesn't have the same knowledge or experience as you. And we will move forward. Okay, so I disclaimer, this is from the Microsoft Innovative Education um, um, Library and I hope that this is okay for them to for me to use. I am not profiting off of this video. And I am just using this to get the word out and help other educators like myself who are stuck um, in a bit of a predicament on how do we uh, meaningfully engage with our students going forward now that classes are canceled. Um, with that, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Evan Wayne, and I am a computer science teacher here at the Duke Composite High School. Um, I make more all of my materials available online and I allow my students to engage with the content as fast or as slow as they can. I do have deadlines and I have been fairly successful in running my stuff in almost a flipped style of learning for the past three years and I hope that some of my experience will help you navigate these next cha uh, these challenging times. Excuse me. Uh, so, like I said, this is from Microsoft Education. Um, this presentation, I hope it helps you, um, and we're going to move forward. One Notebook is one of the more powerful tools of uh, Microsoft's Education Suite, um, the Microsoft Suite. It allows you to collaborate with your students as well as have your content library all in one place. You are able to push uh, your content library to specific classes. There's a collaboration space within the class where you and students can edit and, and talk with each other and um, engage with content like you would in the classroom as much as possible. Um, there's also um, each student gets their own individual notebook that is private to them and that other students can't see, but you can see. Um, they can do homework on that where you can write notes and you can actually put stickers on them and everything like that. Um, I might do a little bit more detailed run through of Class Notebook in the future, uh, but this presentation should help you get started at least so that you can explore it on your own. Um, like I said, my name is Evan Wayne. Um, I am on Twitter. You can follow me at, at Teacher Wayne. Um, you can also follow Microsoft EDU for more information and more things and more ideas that you can use in your classroom um, in the next few months. So let's talk about the instructional cycle. And I know a few of you um, are probably like me. I love planning. Um, I love it. I love reflecting. And for the most part, I love tweaking what I've already made as well. But uh, three quarters of this circle um, is my jam. I really enjoy this. I have a difficult time motivating, motivating myself to assess. Like I, I love assessment and the, and the ideas that come out of it and information that comes out of it, but the process of assessing an assessment is somewhat difficult for me. Um, but with the instructional cycle, everybody follows this model where you plan what you're going to bring into your classroom, you assess what you've brought into the classroom, you reflect on how well the students did, how well the lesson and content came through, you adjust your uh, teaching practices, and you go back into planning. Um, this all takes a lot of time, and especially with now, when we are thrown into a middle of a situation where we don't really know what's going to happen, um, we are back at stage one here, especially for those teachers who are not used to teaching in a distance or outreach format, this is going to be a drastic change in your work habits. <clears throat> um, so right now, we are in the middle of between adjusting and planning between what we were doing and what we are going to do in the future. 
and then hopefully by the end of this we'll all be reflecting and think about how can we do this more um, in the future? How can we augment our classrooms with what we've created over this next few times? I'm a big believer in that every challenge presents different opportunities and it's what we do with those opportunities that brings us through the challenge and how we get stronger and better after the challenge has passed. So in today's world uh, and in the education profession, technology is becoming far more prevalent in our daily educational life. And um, we plan out our units and lessons around our standards and school calendars. Um, but we have also started to build more flex flexibility as we anticipate um, the need to reteach a topic, topic for either better student understanding um, or like we do right now, we have to imagine a situation where we where at a moment's notice distribute additional resources and support materials to our students. So um, right now, technology is highly prevalent in our society and in our schools. And some of you probably already use a lot of ed tech in your classrooms, but um, now it's going to be even more more important to utilize technology. So like we have to distribute our materials in a digital manner and um, class notebook is one of those ways. Um, class, OneNote class notebook provides so much uh, that and so much more. It allows students to work together in a distance format and collaborate. You can see all the different edits that you can go through. Um, I'm not uh, Jody Taylor, but this is an example of something that Jody Taylor uh, certified Microsoft Innovative Educator at Beaver Ridge Magnet School did where they um, changed all of their assignments into this one, all their materials into class notebook. In the past, um, um, in the past, I have noticed students struggling with particular uh, when I've noticed uh, students struggling with a particular assignment, I would run to the photocopier to make a sets of additional activities or lessons for my students. Um, the copier was often busy. Um, I didn't want to waste paper uh, prepping lessons for those just-in-case moments, and I, I absolutely hated that, as well as and in my school, the photocopier is often down. Um, or jamming and it just is a frustrating thing. So after um, a little while of struggling with this and fighting with the photocopier, I tried to change my class um, into a more uh, paperless environment. But now, in my teacher-only section of OneNote, um, class notebook, there's alternate assignments and resources. This is an example of from Jody Taylor. Um, uh, in my teacher only section of OneNote class notebook, um, she has made alternate assignments and resources organized and ready to use whenever needed. Um, with just a few clicks, um, she selects a page, selects a section, and distributes the resources to their students. Done. My students don't even have to wait uh, for me to pass out any papers. Um, you, this is easily done. It doesn't take a lot of time. The content library uh, and teacher only uh, the teacher only places are, are hidden from your students. They're not going to be able to see that. Um, students don't feel singled out by getting any extra work that their classmates don't have um, already assigned to them. They know that their assignments are designed specifically for their learning needs um, and are delivered to the, their student private notebooks without their peers knowing that they have something different. Um, the kind of instructional efficiency has changed the way um, I organize my instructional materials and plan my lessons. I like to describe the structure of OneNote like a digital three-ring binder uh, with sections or dividers and pages. With OneNote Class Notebook, you get the same basic arrangements as well as additional structure to help organize instructional content, collect student work, and encourage collaboration. Um, 
There's free interactive online training as well if you'd like to delve deeper into OneNote and how you can uh, use it in your classroom and I encourage you to look through that. Um, you can handwrite on it. Um, you can uh, use a powerful search in order to find what you're looking for and even text and pictures are handwriting. So like, um, and best part about it is I know my students are terrible at saving. Um, right off the bat, OneNote saves any changes and you can look back at previous changes to make sure that students haven't accidentally deleted something um, that they shouldn't have. Again, if you would like to look through um, some more OneNote in education, you can follow this link uh, and um, you can learn more about it. It does um, format for different, uh, various different devices, whether it's on a PC, a tablet, an iPad, or a phone. Um, it is very um, adaptable for the devices that you're on, especially with kids who might not have access to laptops, um, but they have access to their phone. They're still going to be able to meaningfully engage with their uh, content. Okay, so right now, um, obviously I'm not going to be able to know if you raise your hands, but I'd like you to think about your familiarity with OneNote as it is. How much detail would you say that you are able to share about OneNote and uh, write that down, think of it, say it out loud, um, and then after that, how many of you use OneNote Class Notebook with your students? OneNote is a powerful tool that has allowed many teachers to go completely paperless in their classrooms. And there's so much that it can offer. And in this session, we're going to explore the many different ways that OneNote Class Notebook can change the scope of their learning in classrooms. Okay. Um, we're going to use a demo. Um, I obviously can't demo this for you where you are. We can't go through this together, so I'm going to go through some examples here. So if you sign into Office 365, you should have an Office 365 account with your school district. If not, um, you can set, um, unfortunately, it's probably not going to be able to be used. Hopefully, you have a 365 account. Okay, so you're going to click on to Class Notebook here under the, your apps on Office 365. Um, you can create a class notebook through Office 365 or through Microsoft Teams. Uh, I, can, I will teach you more about Teams in the future, uh, but for now I'm going to briefly show you the quick process to create a class notebook in Office 365. So what you're going to do is you're going to log into Office 365 and click through the class notebook setup tool um, so that uh, you can see all the different steps. Um, I'm going to go through this on the video here. Um, you can follow along and pause at different spots, but I'm going to go relatively quickly. I'm not going to um, take too much time here. Okay, so once you click uh, Class Notebook on Office 365, you're going to click the blue icon, Create a Class Notebook. Now, in seven easy steps, we're going to get our, our class one uh, notebook set up. Um, and first, I'm going to name the notebook. So for this one, I teach summer school every year. Um, we're going to teach summer school. Um, so we're going to just call this summer school. Next, um, I see the structure of the notebook with three distinct areas. There is the collaboration space, the content library, and student notebooks. Now, I can add another teacher if I need, right? Um, if you're co-teaching or if you have a student teacher, you can add other people's names in here. Um, for this, for me, I don't do this. I don't co-teach, so I don't have to put another teacher. Um, if I wanted to share my, my class notebook with somebody so they can see what I did and they wanted to go through that, you can, you can share it this way as well, if that's appropriate. Um, and then I can add their names in here. So like next, I'm prompted to add their stud uh, add students. I often skip the step now and add students later. I like to build the structure of the class notebook before I, I invite, invite them to it. Um, but you can add them in um, by their names and district email. So now 
Even if I don't add students now, in the next step, I can still determine how to personalize the default sections of my students' notebooks. Um, I can use the suggested sections or add others. Right, so for this class, we're going to add handouts, class notes, homework, as well as miscellaneous. So do we get this right? Please confirm with visual preview. So the next step previews the teacher and student spaces before I finish and create the notebook. Um, don't finish creating the notebook. Instead, you'll use the notebook you opened previously. Um, um, I open this uh, and that's it. Once the notebook is created, I can start working in it with any version of OneNote, including OneNote Online and OneNote for Windows 10. Um, today, I'm going to choose OneNote for Windows 10. Okay, so OneNote allows teachers to store information in various multimedia formats so that the student can have one-stop shopping for curricular content that the teacher can predetermine. When building a new class notebook, I often start in the content library. Um, it is a convenient place to store resources uh, for students that students cannot edit. It is a read-only section. Okay, so we are over here with the life cycle of the frog. Um, so here it's in our content library under science. How does the meaning of the word amphibian give us a clue about the tree frog's life cycle? So find a diagram of the tree frog, insert, use the insert ribbon to search for an image, insert the diagram here. So in this little box here, they could put the tree frog. Based on the diagram inserted above, what are the different stages a tree frog passes through? And so they can write uh, type or either ink, so they can use a draw the draw tool, the different answers. Okay. Uh, often I use the content library for resources I want students uh, to I want students to access for a lesson or a unit. Uh, for example, I might have pages with reading material, task lists, and tables of web resources. Um, I hear that many uh, from many teachers that instead of spending oodles of time at the copy machine, they just build student activities in the content library instead. All right. Sometimes I need to organize my instructional content before I'm ready for students to see it. Uh, the teacher only section uh, is perfect for that. It is a place where I can draft my work and then move or copy pages to the content library when I'm ready for students to view the content. To enable the teacher only section, go back to Office 365 and select Manage Class Notebooks. Okay, so that is right here. That is the Magenta Manage Notebooks. Okay. Um, in your Manage Notebooks, you can enable teacher only section group um, for your notebooks. When in the Manage Notebook panel, you can use you can um, say what specific students um, you can be specific in which in what students can view in which sections. This is especially useful when you have groups of students uh, working on different projects and you don't need the entire class to have access to all of the group sections. When in the Manage Notebook panel, you can be specific in which students you, uh, what uh, you can be specific in what students can view and which sections. This is especially useful when you have groups of students working on different projects and you don't need the entire class to have access to all of the group sections. So now we're going to go over Microsoft Teams. So you should still be logged into Office 365 and just beside the class notebook icon you should see the Teams icon. Um, Teams is also a very powerful tool and it's the one that I prefer to use um, when creating my class notebooks. So if your school district is using Microsoft Teams, you can use the class notebook within your class team. When students are enrolled in the team, they are automatically added to the class notebook. And if your school or district is using School Data Sync, students might be automatically enrolled in Teams based on their class enrollment. These are all useful and time-saving features.
one of my favorite features in uh, connecting OneNote and Microsoft Teams is the option to create an assignment using an existing page from class notebook. Um, as with all assignments, I enter the basic information such as title, instruction, and due date. Then I select resources for my students. Uh, when I select a page from our class notebook, I'm prompted to select a student section to which the page will be distributed. When I publish the assignment, students receive directions and a specific link directly to the page they need to complete in OneNote. I appreciate how the connection between Microsoft Teams and OneNote make things easier for my students and me. So, I'd like to know how you use OneNote with your students. Please leave a comment, or how you plan to use OneNote with your students, please leave a comment below. Um, I'd love to hear from you and collaborate with you um, if you are open to that. Um, Mr. Henson, could you come to the office, please? Mr. Henson? Apologies for that. Um, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy um, this next little time and push yourself into a new more uncomfortable things. So I want to know how you plan on using OneNote with your students and what features of Class Notebook are you most excited about to try with your students as well. Again, tweet out your learning um, or comment below. I can be found at at Teacher Wayne. Um, try to use the Microsoft EDU hashtag. And to get training, build connections and more um, in the educa uh, Microsoft Educator community, you can go to this link. Um, use this promo code to redeem your points for attending today's session and to get help find tutorials at support.office.com slash education. To get a copy of this presentation and to share with others you can scan this QR code um, or you can go to aka.ms one notebook to rule. Thank you so much.